वेलकम टू ई पी जी पाठशाला आई एम डॉक्टर नीरू टंडन फ्रॉम डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ इंग्लिश वी एस एस जी कॉलेज कानपुर वी आर डिस्कसिंग नाइनटीन सेंचुरी इंग्लिश लिटरेचर द थर्ड पेपर एंड इन इट दिस मॉड्यूल द इम्पॉर्टेंस ऑफ बींग अर्नेस्ट बाय ऑस्कर वाइल्ड विच हैज बीन रिटन बाय डॉक्टर एम ई उपाध्याय In this module we are going to discuss about Oscar Wilde about his plays about his technique and characters as well the students will learn about the plot outline and the characters themes and other aspects of the importance of being earnest by Oscar Wilde Oscar Wilde is a celebrated playwright and literary genius The importance of being earnest was an artistic breakthrough for Wilde. It is a self-parody and where Wilde had already achieved success. Wilde's genre of preference in the Victorian age using melodrama or sentimental comedy made him famous. He was born on October 16th, 1854 in Dublin. educated at trinity college and oxford he was famous for his gaudy dresses dislike of conventional values and belief in aestheticism he did not hide his homosexuality one of the most successful playwrights of the late victorian age oscar wilde suffered a dramatic downfall and was imprisoned after convicted of gross indecency for homosexual acts he died in paris in 1900 so he led a controversial life because of his sexual preferences and the thing was that he never tried to hide it rather he talked about it and tried to justify it his concept of homosexuality he felt that sexuality is a personal matter where society should not interfere but the way he did it was considered indecent by the victorian society and people started objecting it his father was a reputed surgeon and his mother was a poet and irish nationalist oscar wilde as a student was brilliant he loved classical literature and studied at trinity university where he won a scholarship to oxford there he developed his ideas about art then he moved to london after university study where he worked as a journalist lecturer and writer through his charm wit and brilliant conversation as well as his flamboyant dress and behavior oscar wilde became a darling of victorian high society in london he became one of the most successful playwrights of the stylish london upper class theater scene with a series of society dramas including Lady Windermere's Fan published in 1892 A Woman of No Importance in 1893 and An Ideal Husband in 1895 He was at the height of his success when The Importance of Being Earnest came out in 1895 In this brilliantly witty comedy Wild used the conventions of society drama to mock the very things society drama had the morality and values of high society were also criticized Wild's abrupt fall and imprisonment came when Queensbury who was a pugnacious homophobic and powerful man and hated wild publicly attacked wild for his homosexuality wild sued queensbury for defamation to try to protect himself wild lost the suit and was then prosecuted 
and convicted for homosexuality under British anti sodomy laws. Wilde was imprisoned for two years. This humiliation ended his career as a playwright and his public life in London as well. So he moved to Paris after his imprisonment and died there in 1900 at the age of 46. Among the major works of Oscar Wilde, we can name a few like in prose work, he wrote The Picture of Dorian Gray, The Happy Prince and Other Tales, A House of Pomegranates and The Model Millionaire. In his plays, A Woman of No Importance, An Ideal Husband and The Importance of Being Earnest are praiseworthy. In poems, The Ballad of Reading Girl, De Profundis, The Harlot's House, The Sphinx and Symphony in Yellow are famous. The Decay of Lying and the Soul of Man under Socialism are his essays. Whenever we talk about Oscar Wilde, we talk art for art's sake. The ideas of critic John Ruskin and Walter Pater influenced Oscar Wilde. Wilde believed in the superiority of art to nature or to morality or to reality and in the imaginative power of art to cultivate an aesthetic transcendence in individuals. He believed art should strive to attain an ideal beauty and freedom rather than being a mere mirror of life's dull realities and restrictions. For him, art was there to create or to represent, they were two different things for him. He believed that art is to create and not just to represent. He did not believe that art should have a moral or social purpose. It was as opposed to other writers like Dickens who sees art as a means of transforming not only the individual but also the society. He said art is quite useless in terms of practical value but of great value in and of itself as a source of beauty, imagination and aesthetic pleasure. Many of Wilde's ideas about art can be seen playing out in hilarious and metaphorical ways in the importance of being earnest. Importance of being earnest is a comedy play and that was first performed in 1895. The play is often performed in Britain, especially by amateur dramatics groups and is much loved for its clever humor and comic situations. It is a story of a young man, Jake Worthling, who wants to marry the daughter of Lady Bracknell. But Lady Bracknell rejects him because he tells her that he does not know his parents as he was found in a handbag at Victoria Station. It was an early attempt in Victorian melodrama by Oscar Wilde. Little satire with glimpses of comedy of manners and little intellectual farce was used. The importance of being earnest remains till date one of the greatest comedies in the English language. It is a sharp satire of the upper class Victorian society. It is at his best engaging, charming and wooing the readers and audience with sharp wit. Now, if we want to understand the play, let, let us understand the play at a glance. Jack, known as Algernon as Ernest, lives a reputable life in the country, setting an example for his young ward, Cecily. Algernon lives a luxurious life in London. He shows to the world an imaginary invalid friend named Bunbury. Jack also shows off a character a wayward younger brother called Ernest. 
he uses him as pretext for going up to London and enjoying himself. Now, Jack wants to marry Algernon's cousin Gwendolyn, but he must first convince her mother, Lady Bracknell. Jack, who had been abandoned in a handbag at Victoria Station, so this is quite a tricky task. Algernon visits Jack's house in the country and introduces himself to Sicily as Ernest. He hides his identity. Later, he wins her over and they soon get engaged. Immediately, after arrival at home, Jack announces Ernest's demise. This ignites a series of farcical events. In the end, Jack finds out that his parents were Lady Bracknell's sister and brother-in-law. In fact, he is Algernon's elder brother named Ernest. Jack concedes that he now understands the vital importance of being Ernest that paves way for the two pairs of lovers to get married. The main characters of this play are John Worthing, JP, known as Jack in the country, Ernest in the city. He is the guardian of Sicily and wants to marry Gwendolyn, but is not allowed to because her mother does not approve of his being found as an infant in Victoria Station. Algernon in the city, Ernest in the country, he is cousin of Gwendolyn and wants to marry Sicily. He claims to have a friend, Bunbury, whom he visits in the country when he wants to escape the city. Lady Bracknell, she is Gwendolyn's mother and Algernon's aunt. She refuses to allow the marriage of Gwendolyn and Jack. Other characters are daughter of Lady Bracknell, that is Gwendolyn Fairfax. She wishes to marry Jack whom she believes is Ernest. Some other characters are Cecily Cardew, Miss Prism, Cannon, Merryman and Lane. Now this play also has conflict. Conflict is the essence of any play to develop it. In this play, Jack faces many obstacles to his romantic union with Gwendolyn. One of them is presented by Lady Bracknell, who is Gwendolyn's mother. She objects to Jack's origins. Another obstacle is Gwendolyn's fascination with the name Ernest, since she does not know Jack's real name. The mood of the play is one of comedy and satire. Some of the ideas Wilde is trying to make fun of and criticize include Victorian ideas surrounding marriage and Victorian social expectations. Wilde's satire is marked by wit and is throughout cheerful. The major themes of this play can be divided into four. The first, the nature of marriage. The second, the restraints of morality. Third, hypocrisy versus ingenuity. And the fourth, the importance of not being earnest. Now, the first important theme, marriage. It is quite important in the play, the importance of being earnest. It works both as a primary force for the plot and as a topic for philosophical speculation and debate. The nature of marriage is discussed for the first time in the opening dialogue between Algernon and his butler Lane. From then onwards, the subject never disappears for very long. Algernon and Jack dispute briefly discussing the nature of marriage. The point of discussion is whether a marriage proposal is a matter of business or a matter of pleasure. Lady Bracknell too comments on the issue when she says, I quote, 
an engagement should come on a young girl as a surprise, pleasant or unpleasant as the case may be, unquote. Even the enlisted bachelors by Lady Bracknell and the prepared interviews support a set of assumptions about the nature and purpose of marriage. Now you can see that if you compare this thing with the Pride and Prejudice written by Jane Austen, then you find the same theme of marriage being just concentrated upon, where Jane Austen is also presenting the mother of Elizabeth and Jane concerned all the time of marrying them with people of great wealth. What she was trying to find out in the prospective groom was the social status and the monetary position. In the same way, here Oscar Wilde presents this thought in the form of a debate that whether marriage is a matter of pleasure or a moneyed person. These assumptions throw light on the conventional obsession of the Victorian morality, social position, income and character. The play has lot of such debates about the nature of marriage. Lane comments that he believes it to be a very pleasant state, while Algernon considers Lane's views on marriage as somewhat lax. But his own views are constantly cynical until he meets and falls in love with Sicily. On the contrary, Jake's views are of true romantic. The second theme comes in form of the restraints of morality. Morality and the restraints it imposes on society are often discussed in the play The Importance of Being Earnest. Algernon believes the servant class has an accountability to set a moral standard for the upper classes. Jack thinks reading a private cigarette case is ungentlemanly, while Algernon believes more than half of modern culture depends on what one shouldn't read. These restraints and assumptions suggest a strict code of morals that existed in the Victorian society. Wilde is not much concerned with what is moral and what is immoral. He makes fun of these ideas of morality. The very title of the play is double-edged comment on the phenomena. Jack, Gwendolyn, Prism and Doctor who put a premiere on soberity and they honesty, they are hypocrites. Third theme comes as hypocrisy versus ingenuity. Algernon and Jack create analogous deceptions, but they are not morally alike characters. Jack fabricates his brother Ernest's death. He constructs the deception with costumes and props. He does his level best to prove to the family that he is mourning. He is acting hypocritically. On the contrary, Algernon and Cecily fabricate stories that do not tell the truth in any serious way or try to change anybody's perception of reality. And the fourth uh, theme, the importance of not being earnest. Earnestness involves seriousness or sincerity. It is the great opponent of morality in the importance of being earnest. Earnestness can be found in many forms, boringness, gravity, snobbishness, complacency, arrogance, self-righteousness and sense of duty are the characteristics of the Victorian character that Wilde saw. Whenever characters in the play use the word serious, it means trivial and vice versa. The word earnest comprises two different but related ideas according to Wilde. One is the concept of false truth and another is the concept of false morality. One of the contradictions 
play presence is the impossibility in reality being either earnest that means serious or sincere or moral while asserting to be so the characters who adopt triviality and wickedness are the ones who may have the chance of attaining gravity and virtue. Writer has used symbols in the importance of being earnest and one of the important symbols is the double life. The double life is the central metaphor in the play. Bun burying meaning avoiding one's duties and responsibilities by claiming to see a fictitious person is the reflection of double life over here. It is defined by Algernon in the play. Jack creates an image of his wayward brother Ernest which is a device for escaping social and moral responsibilities. Another symbol is the symbol of food. Scenes of eating food recur in the importance of being earnest and they are constantly sources of conflict too. Act 1 presents the extended cucumber sandwich joke where Algernon eats all the sandwiches greedily without realizing it. In Act 2, Gwendolyn and Cecily argue on who is really engaged to Ernest Worthing is portrayed. Fiction and writing again is used as a symbol. Other recurrent symbols in the play are depicted through writing and the concept of fiction. In the beginning of the play, Algernon begins to suppose that life of Jack is at least partly a fiction. Bunbury is also a fiction. When Algernon utters in Act 1, I quote, more than half our modern culture depends on what one shouldn't read, unquote, might be making an indirect reference to fiction. In Act 2, the symbol of fiction develops further and Sicily speaks of three volume novels. Form, structure and language are the criteria which decide the worth of any play. As far as Oscar Wilde's this play is concerned, we can say that he appeared as a witty writer. His humor in the importance of being earnest depends on creating absurd situations and characters. These characters lack insight that causes them to respond to these situations in absurd manner. For example, Lady Bracknell's obsession with her own parties and complete lack of sympathy for invalids makes her react to the news of the illness of Bunbury in a preposterous manner. She says, I think it is high time that Mr. Bunbury made up his mind whether he was going to live or to die. This shilly shallying with the question is absurd. I would be much obliged if you would ask Mr. Bunbury from me to be kind enough not to have a relapse on Saturday for I rely on you to arrange my music for me." Unquote. Now you can see height of this thing that she is just advising him that when he should get an appointment with death. Wilde became famous for dialogue and his use of language in the play. His earlier plays suffered from an unevenness of the thematic clash between the trivial and the serious. The importance of being earnest achieves a perfect style that allows these to dissolve. Wilde uses original self-created epigrams, concise witty sayings. They are often general reflections on life. For example, I quote, all women become like their mothers, that is their tragedy. No man does, that's his." Unquote. Dialogues of the play are interesting and eye-catching. Wilde himself said, the real charm of the play, if it is to have charm, must be in the dialogue. Unquote. To sum up, we can just appreciate Wilde's wit, humor, and satire 
the way he has presented serious things in a trivial way and trivial things in a witty way. This play poses certain questions in front of us in a very light manner. For example, the matter of marriage. It is so important that to understand marriage as an institution, how important it is and what importance is being attached to it by the present society. Concept of marriage he just presents with two things that marriage is for pleasure or marriage is for the society's sake. Such questions are presented in a very beautiful way, in a light way, charming way and that guarantees the success of the play by Oscar Wilde. He taught the world that trivial things are not that trivial, they should be taken seriously. Thank you for visiting EPG Pathshala.